Hi everyone, today let's talk about Tesla numbers, then we'll quickly talk about silver, as well as Max Payne, then we'll get into the charts, as well as my results for the day and my thoughts going into the Wednesday session. If you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. I make videos like this every single day that the markets are open as well as Sundays, so make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. So Tesla shares went up quite a lot today, nearly 7% on a beat on delivery as well as production numbers. Estimates had them at about 445,000 deliveries during the period, and they beat that by 20,000 cars. And because of that, shares went up more than 6%. You can see delivery numbers here at 466,000. They produced a few thousand more vehicles than that number. They're saying demand was driven by the incentives under the Inflation Reduction Act of the $7,500 tax credit on these vehicles. And then they reiterate the fact that Tesla has been rallying super aggressively. We've been covering it on this channel for quite a while. It's up 127% year to date. Obviously, it had a very difficult 2022, and it's rallied a lot since those lows. Moving over to some thoughts on silver. They're saying that demand is still very strong on silver, but supply is not meeting it. You can see the chart that they're showing here. Demand quite high, supply not really going higher with demand, and this is partially being driven by solar as well as as well as technology in general. And they're saying the strain on supply could significantly raise the price of silver and that the solar sector could exhaust global silver reserves by 2050. So definitely an interesting play here on silver. We might see silver prices going much higher, and it's worth paying attention to for the long term. Moving over to the economic calendar, you can see PMI came in lower than expectations. Not good. We're seeing ISM manufacturing and PMI being much lower than expectations, and they were already expected to be below the 50 line. So everything pulling back here in terms of economic indicators. Not great, but markets still went higher. Don't forget tomorrow's Independence Day. Happy Independence Day. And the markets will be closed for that. Looking at Wednesday here, we have factory orders at 10 o'clock, FOMC minutes coming out here at 1400, and then we still have a pretty big week going into Thursday and Friday with non-farm payrolls and the JOLTS report. Moving over to Max Payne for the Friday expiration, it's up to 438, up a little bit, still not very many options, 448 still seems like the upper limit for this week, the top of the puts is right in that range, 445 to around 447, could finish right in that zone if we get another finish like last week, otherwise highest put strike here at 438, somewhere in here 438 to 440 would make sense. But like I said, we have been finishing in an area where the calls make at least a little bit of money. And then just to remind you, there are these huge put strikes down here, which are jacking up that put call ratio up to 1.83. Without those numbers, it would be a much lower put call ratio. But 438 does seem like a solid level that will stay above going into the expiration. Moving over to the charts, starting off with the S&Ps, not a ton of volume, as you would expect. Short trading day going into the holiday, basically went sideways. Slightly bullish on the day, 0.12%. We're still stuck in this zone between the trend support and horizontal resistance at 445.49. And those are the two levels I'm watching. Right now, looking for a push up to that level before we find rejection. Momentum, still bullish. Like I mentioned, volume way down here. RSI ticked up slightly. Overall, minimal changes from my Sunday video. Still a slight bullish tilt here on SPY. Moving over to the NASDAQ, very similar. Basically went sideways, a little bit more choppy here on the hourly chart. Still holding in the zone, 367.63 up to 371.25. You can see that slight bullish day, 0.24. Basically a doji candle, momentum still moving back towards bullish. RSI still below the SMA, but in the bullish section. Volume, again, much lower. Slight bullish tilt. And similar to the SPY, slight bullish tilt, looking for a push up to 371.25. Moving over to the Russell and the Dow here on the 4-hour chart. You can see the Russell is right at the top of this range here. Again, getting very close to that 189 level. Does seem like we might get a bit of a breakout. We do have some trend resistance here worth watching. If we get a break, I'll be looking for 195.15. Very important level that marks the highs going back to February here. Either way, still looks bullish. Nice little bullish day. Overbought conditions, which is interesting. Momentum fading a little bit. But overall, trend is still intact, and it looks like it's going higher. 
Dow showing a little bit of weakness also, lower RSI. It's hard to say whether that's just the lower volume or not. It still looks good on trend, looking to push up to that 345.25 level at this previous resistance here. And if that breaks, I'm watching for 347.67. And then just behind that, you have trend resistance at 349. So a couple of levels to watch here to the upside. But overall, both of these have a trend that is intact with a little bit of fading momentum. Moving over to Apple and Tesla, Apple actually pulled back a little bit from that big push that it had on Friday, back to the 9 EMA, trend is still intact, momentum fading, RSI, back into the bullish area, but not overbought anymore. Interesting, I'm sure this will continue higher up to trend resistance up around 200. Talked about that in the Sunday video as well. Tesla, you can see that gap up and rally held right at these previous highs through a big wick, found a little bit of rejection. I would expect that to continue into the Wednesday session, still watching that 301.93 level. Moving over to Staples and Discretionary, Staples got the rally, talked about that for a while, we're back into this previous zone, higher low setup, still looking at 75.40 to the upside, Discretionary, gap up, hit that trend resistance to the penny, very interesting, got a little bit of a rejection from there, momentum still bullish, still overbought, still being driven higher by Tesla, but we did get into an area that was interesting in terms of resistance, certainly could hit horizontal resistance up at 174.76, but this has been quite the move with very little pullbacks, again looking very similar to that Tesla chart, and as long as Tesla continues to go higher, I would expect discretionary to continue higher. Moving over to financials and utilities. Financials finding some more legs. This looks very good. Nice consolidation, looking like a breakout here. And I still think we'll get a push up to around that 36 to 37 in this previous zone. Looking at utilities here, very bullish day. Got above 65, 75 at my level. Looking at 66.10 for my next resistance. If it gets above these trends, you really have no resistance in terms of trends up until the 55 EMA at $67. So nice setup, nice double bottom. And this is potentially looking like a breakout from this zone. Moving over to transports, similar thesis, breaking out above these two previous highs. We did close above them here and it does look like transports are going much higher. Extending out that trend line, you can see trend resistance up around 266, which was right in this consolidation zone, which I was talking about in the Sunday video as well. Moving over to breadth on the 50 and 200 day averages here. Similar thesis, everything continues to go higher. 50 gapping up, going higher, hit 77, 46 resistance. Starting to get close to that topping area, 92.25 is that top. If we get into the zone, I would expect to find rejection from there, but breadth still widening. Everything looks clean here on this rally still so far. Moving over to the dollar here on the hour and the daily. This is starting to look like a flag type setup. You can see this very clear flagging move. We now have a lower high, and if this breaks out to the downside, I would expect this to break down to these previous lows around 101.25. Dollar still looking a little bit weak, despite this grinding bullishness that we're seeing here. And like I said, I do expect this to break out to the downside and retest these previous lows. Moving over to J&K and TLT. J&K gap down, island reversal now, looking to pull back to trend support. We're still grinding higher and it's kind of interesting at this point. We're seeing stocks go higher, yields still holding in the zone. I know bond yields still have some tie to the Federal Reserve yield and the risk-free rate, but I would really like to see high yields starting to move higher where people start to take a little bit more risk. We're just not quite seeing that yet. TLT breaking down pretty big here today. And at this point, I would expect this to break back down to this 101, to this 101 area. Looking at the volatility indices, not much to say. Bond market volatility pulled back a little bit, but still in the same zone. VIX moved back into these previous lows. Not much to say, still chopping in this zone and still showing bearish indicators. Moving over to my accounts here, did fairly well, up about $300 it says here. Got it just above that $99,000 level. Hopefully we can get above $100,000. I've gotten very close to it several times at this point, and every time I get into that zone, I start to see some pullbacks from an account perspective. We'll see how that plays out. But looking at my positions here, I had two 188 puts. I was really expecting to get assigned on those. But looking at the after hours pricing, I think we might have just got above 188. I really wanted to get assigned on these positions and we'll see how that plays out. I already sold a call here. So if I don't get assigned, that might put me in a little bit tighter spot going into Wednesday. 
Either way, still bullish on the IWM and I want to get into covered call positions or continue to sell puts. Looking at the queues, I did sell a covered call here. I sold the 371 early in the session, rolled that down to 370, collected some profits on that 370 for today, and then I ended up rolling that out to Wednesday here for 370 at $1.42, and I still have those 100 shares here at 370.42, so an assignment on that position would be a nice little profit. I also sold a 369 for Tuesday. I sold a 369 for today, which I did get full profit on that as well. So overall, slightly bullish, but not going full, but I'm not leveraged all the way in yet. Let me know down in the comment section what you think of Tesla's numbers. Is Tesla just going to go much, much higher forever? And will their demand continue to expand the way that it has? Or are we starting to see a top in terms of electric vehicle demand? Definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video. Make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.